as well. Okay, hello and welcome to uh, the first ever Shep, Chef Hop Fest, our virtual beer festival that we're holding over the course of this weekend. Um, hello if you're listening to the podcast version of this. Hello if you're watching this on our Facebook page, perhaps most importantly in the circumstances. Um, hello to our very special guest this evening. Hello everyone. Hello. hello. <laughs> Very good. So altogether, we have got uh, 15 people uh, who are here at session number one. Um, I'm James, um, and we also have Laura and uh, Adam, who are here from Hello. the usual Sheffield Hopcast team as well. Over the course of the next hour or so, we are going to share a beer together, which will all be uh, along the theme that I set more on that in a second. Uh, we'll have a bit of a chat as well. And the reason being really that, of course, beer festivals in real life are not going to be happening this year. So we thought uh, we'd do the next best thing. Now, if you've been keeping up with the uh, Hopcast episodes that we've been doing through lockdown, this is kind of what we've been doing on Zoom with a guest. So we thought that we'd just kind of, you know, ramp up the volume a little bit and get a few more people on over the course of the weekend. So tonight is the first of four sessions. Um, each is going to be hosted by a different member of the Hopcast crew. And each has gone for a different theme. So tonight I went for a, a suitably vague theme to leave it wide open to our respective creativity. So the theme for our beer choices tonight is loud and proud. Um, I did explain this on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, but the reason that I went for that is kind of with everything that's going on in the world right now, it's partly about kind of celebrating diversity in, in whatever form we kind of want that to um B or equally it's about celebrating beers that are just a little bit nuts for whatever reason um so yeah i mean your your um this could be your beer choice that matches the the theme it could be that you just wear a ridiculously loud shirt as i believe someone has chosen to do and we'll come to them in a second um it could just be that you just scream the name of your beer when i ask you it doesn't matter you know loud and proud is the theme it is wide open to interpretation um, incidentally, you don't have to wait until I come to you to talk to you in order to crack open your beer. Please feel free to uh, to uh, to start that. So I'm going to go first and um, tell you my beer choice. So um, this is loud and proud for two reasons. I kind of feel that the beer label itself is quite colourful and quite loud, but also the beer itself is is a bit nuts. So this is an imperial churros stout. So you know the fancy Mexican donuts. Um, it's called. This little piggy went to market, and it's from uh, Heist Bruker, who are based not a million miles away. Well, actually, they're, they're based in or have been based in Clown, just in the process of moving to Kelham Island. So, will be uh, soon to become uh, a local brewery to us here in um, Sheffield. It's eleven percent, so you could say that I've gone, you know, fairly big to start the uh, the weekend. And this contains all manner of things. Um, I've got cinnamon in here. I've got hazelnut. I've got marshmallow. I've got chocolate. I've got all kinds of things. So this is my beer choice that I think is pretty loud and proud. I'm just going to go around people just in the order that you are on my screen. So Alex Cam, good evening. Welcome good evening. to the first Chef Hopcast. Um, it was your shirt that I was paying reference to. Um, I don't know if that is your connection to the theme, but um, yeah, tell us, uh, tell us what beer you brought. Um, and my nephew's artwork on the wall as well, if you can see that, that's, um, he's, he's four years old, so I think that's quite good, to be honest. But uh, I, I wanted to get a Neapolitan by Northern Monk, which I really like. They didn't have it, so I've had to get another Northern Monk, which I've not had before, called Faith, which is a hazy pale ale, which sounded fairly pleasant for a Friday evening. So I'm, I'm, I'm not drinking during the week at the moment, so I'm a little bit of a Friday lightweight to be honest. Okay. Yeah, Friday night doesn't count though, obviously. You can go mental tonight. That's fine. That's quite that's um, quite all right. Yeah, and I've been to Northern Monks Brewery. Um, you know, I've, I've had beers at there. I think there's about 15 on tap at any one time. They're, they're a nice bunch of guys and girls there. Seems to have been built from a sort of very humble beginning, family sort of connections. And yeah, I quite, I quite like their ethos. But uh, the Neapolitan was the one I wanted to have for this, but couldn't find it. So. All right, fair enough. What, so what, what kind of beer would you normally go for? What's your sort of go-to style when it comes to beers, Alex? Uh, changed over the years, really. I've gone from a lot of stouts to quite a lot of sours. So I've gone from one extreme to the other, you could say, really. I, I don't really buy much of the dark beer now. I'm more into the, the sort of lighter, hazier ones and, and the stouts, which, uh, of course, we went to a stout 
beer festival last year, which was quite a quite a revelation. Yep, absolutely. Yep, good stuff. All right, fabulous. Um, let's go to uh, let's go to Laura next. So Laura Bainbridge Hasley, who has been on the podcast before um, when we did our International Women's Day special, which was only actually about three months ago, even though it feels like it was about eight years ago because of everything that's happened in the world um, since then. There's no pressure here, Laura, but you do run a beer shop, so I'm expecting something pretty impressive, and you do like your loud and proud beers. <laughs> Well, correction, I don't run the beer shop. My husband does. I just take advantage of a nice <laughs> discount. Uh, although I have been helping him this afternoon. When I finished my day job, I've been helping him this afternoon because it's Friday afternoon is the busiest. And we've only got one person in the shop at the time, so they're queuing up the road at the moment. And they're still queuing up the road now. So I went in to buy a beer. He guilt-tripped me into buying a load of beers I had stashed in the back. So in the past five minutes, I've just picked one out of my handbag that I thought would do. I've gone with the power of independent trucking uh, by Pomona Island. Uh, it'll come, there's no surprise to people who know me that it is an imperial stout. This one's got chocolate, cherry and coconut in it. I've not had it before. Uh, the reason I actually wanted it, not because it's a stout, because it's, it's a song by a punk band called Big Black. And it's a very short, noisy song, so that's kind of loud, isn't it? So that's yep. my shoehorned in to theme situation. It's You're good. Welcome. You mentioned about anyone that knows you will not be surprised that it's an imperial stout. For anyone that doesn't know you, Laura, uh, I mean, what what percentage of your beer intake tends to be ten percent and up? Right. <laughs> At the moment, not too much, because I've still been working through lockdown. At the weekend, it's quite high. But the problem is we keep saving, like, stupid stouts. We've just got, like, a... The, the kitchen is full of imperial stouts. And the, there's no there's no really time to drink them, because we're both working full-time, and we don't want to be hung over all the time. What's the, what's the address? I'll pop around. <laughs> Uh, that's a good call. Uh, right, cool. Let's go to uh, Simon. Now, Simon was actually one of our uh, lockdown guests. Um, again, I mean, it was only a few weeks ago, but it feels like such a long time ago now that. Um, so Simon uh, also does a beer podcast, don't you? So um, yeah, yeah, kind of tell us, tell us very briefly about your, uh, your beer podcast and what your beer is that you've brought along tonight. Yeah, um, we're Biz Without Frontiers podcast, me and a couple of other people uh, based in the Midlands. And um, yeah, we've been doing that for a couple of years. Um, yeah, like James says, I was a guest on the Sheffield Hopcast about just a few weeks ago, but it feels like a different age, really. That was just the start of lockdown. Um, the beer that I've got is uh, called Defiant Hearts, and it uh, has got hearts all over the can. Um, this is from Twisted Barrel Brewery in Coventry, um, who just this week have opened up um, to allow people to go and collect beers from their tap room, which is normally rammed full of people. So they're suffering a little bit from from not having uh, the punters in. Um, but yeah, um, and the beer itself is, uh, I think this is pronounced a quike IPA. It's that funky uh, Norwegian farmhouse yeast that uh, it's either Kvik, it looks like, but I've, I've heard it's pronounced Quike. Uh, it's a soft, juicy pale ale full of citrus character, orange esters from the Voss Quike blend effortlessly, effortlessly, easier said than done, with the Amarillo and Mandarina Bavaria hops. So yeah, it's a, it's a kind of pale ale. It's very, very um, murky, full on full on Merc there. Um, and oh, it's, good, yeah. um, it's, it's really nice. It's the orange notes come through massively and it's got a really dry finish on it and, uh, it's 5%. So it's kind of sessionable really you can go on to something stronger after this. So, yeah, I, I feel it would be a good contender for my, uh, beer or juice, uh, Twitter game, which oh. has caught on so much. I'm still the only person that actually plays it, but still, you know, you never know if you wanted to get involved with that, Simon, I think that would be a good one for, uh... I think I've got a hundred percent record of that, James, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think most people have to be fair. It's not the hardest game in the world. You, you, you tell I, James, I actually played that game over WhatsApp you yesterday, but you disqualified my, uh, my entry, which was, I thought it was a bit unfair, but you know, 
Yeah, that's because you went to juice, but you'd put some sparkling water in it to make it look like so beer, which juice. is clearly cheating. That doesn't... Oh, it was juice. It was juice or beer, and you said beer. You just got it wrong. You're not, you're not upset it. Anyway, we're moving on. Uh, right, let's go to uh, Laura. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Um, now, normally on the main Hopcast, I would ask you two questions. What's your beer and what is your beer attire? Because you always wear a beer T-shirt for the main Hopcast. Um, does that trend continue tonight? It does. I've got um, my favourite... I might have worn this already, actually. It's one of my favourite T-shirts. Favorite, one of my favourite beer festivals, Beer Town in Malton. Um, is my beer attire um lovely little local festival fairly small quite understated but absolutely incredible beers and great breweries represented and um i think it's currently being rescheduled to later in the year to november time so hopefully that will be something that can potentially go ahead still but we will see um and my beer it's actually from uh, simon's neck of the woods i think i heard about it on your podcast actually simon Ooh. attic bruco Oh, yeah, yeah, Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's called What's Wrong With Ya? Which I thought fitted with the loud. And it's a mild, which I chose because I am one of those rare breed, proud, mild drinkers. And it's a mild in a can. And I was really excited about it. So <laughs> that's, that's what I've brought tonight. I'm I'm with other Laura with thumbs down, not into <laughs> miles. Just don't understand them. But many is the conversation that we've had about this on the uh, on the podcast. Um, Adam also a bit advocate of uh, miles, and I'm just like, no, nah, just don't get it. Don't get it. Uh, right, thank you, Laura. Um, let's go to Will, who is uh, down south. I think is how it's pronounced isn't it and looks like are you going to play a song for us later on i'm sure i could see some sheet music that you've got there yeah it's because i was swigging from my beer during the conversation but it's very recognizable so i didn't want to uh to give it away so, I had so to... you've disguised your beer so no 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 i just switched my background around so i could pop over and drink and pop oh right oh, i thought you'd gone to the <laughs> to the like actually like propping a book up to to hide yeah. your... so you right okay well this is gonna have to be a heck of a good reveal then so will what is okay. your beer well, it was in 2015, me and my mates went to Dublin and we, after a few pints of Guinness, you normally drink, we moved on to different things and we kept seeing this beer all over the place that none of us had ever seen uh, in England before, which shows how quickly it has taken over everywhere. Um, the beer I have gone for, for Loud and Proud, is a good old fashioned Hot House 13 standard supermarket lager that you can buy anywhere. Um, the reason it fits the theme is because I think, man, I, I love craft beer as much as the next man, but sometimes you just got a bosh of supermarket lager. It's just something about it that's just so nice. And uh, secondly, the reason it fits the theme is because that weekend we were in Dublin in 2015 was the weekend they voted to legalise gay marriage in Ireland. So it is proud in that sense as well. I think your second reason is considerably better than your first. Let's 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 ignore the first one. Let's concentrate on the second one. That uh, yeah, we'll 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 just we'll go with that. We'll go with. I've that. seen you drinking more Fosters, James, than you would care to admit in your time. Anyone that has ever met me will know just how much of a lie that is. Um, but yes, thank you uh, for your delightful input there, uh, Will. Um, is the reality of that that you actually just forgot to buy a beer and then just bought one from a super? Or did you actually, did you genuinely pick that? I've had that in the fridge. You'll know how hard this has been for me. That has been in my fridge all week. And I've been going to the fridge and going, oh, I'll drink that. Bollocks, I've got to save that for Friday. <laughs> I can't believe it. it's, it's a lovely, lovely beer. It's refreshing. Fair enough. I've, I've, I've had it a few times and always quite enjoyed it. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's kind of live as go. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, right, let's go to Gary, who is, I would say, a, a, a relatively recent convert to kind of the, the more sort of craft side of, of beer. Yeah, I think so. I'm, probably the last couple of years, I've been... I happened across a uh, craft beer bar in Berlin and started drinking all, well, I had a, I was on my own, my friend had got lost at a football match, as often happens when we go to Germany, and I was there with a man, we didn't have much uh, common language, so I just decided that I would bond through the 
trying of many beers and uh, I fell in love with the IPAs and the double dry the dry hopped pilsner you are you are a fan of anything that's got the initials DDH at the uh, start of it. I think is a is a fair thing to say. I've got a feeling you, you're not going to let us down here either with your uh, with your beer choice tonight. So what have you uh, what have you brought along? Uh, since um, in lockdown, I've been very much into uh, cloud water, and I have a um, cloud water double dry hopped IPA. The wonderful title is The Edge of the Bread. Um, Cloud Water is very famous for those sorts of strange names. And the reason it's loud and proud is that Cloud Water have been very loud on Twitter in their um, approval and backing of the Black Lives Matter campaign. And obviously, that's a reason to be proud to drink, to drink their beer. Yep, that's a good reason. I like it. Good stuff. Fab. All right. Um, Adam. Oh, you've got a choice. Left hand or right hand? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm going to say left hand. Left hand. I've gone for a kind of the new Unbeliever um, by uh, Aberdale. Good stuff. Uh, tropical Berliner Weiss. Um I think like the Emporium range and stuff is something that like Abbeydale are quite proud of because they get people involved, you know, the, not just the brewers and stuff. I, I know that Laura and Jim are big into their uh, sour beers and stuff, which we'll find out about tomorrow and stuff. But, um, you know, they've got that off the ground themselves and I'm sure they're very proud of it. And we're very proud of Laura and Jim for um, a <laughs> good to start with that. Um, but I've, um, yeah, I've even got an Unbeliever t-shirt. So that's kind of me being proud of the, the brand as well. So, yeah, so I thought I'd give this one a go. Um, tropical Berliner Weiss, sour, fruity. Yeah, I think it all fits. Yep, except that. Um, I'm allowed to ask what the other option would have been if I'd have gone right hand. Um, siren, Pompamello Cello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gru- juicy grapefruit sour IPA. So I kind of went on the ridiculous um, combination of. I think it's really bright as well. Look at that. Yeah, I've had that a couple of times. I think it's, it's, it's like one of the... 1990s Bermuda shorts, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah. It's the kind of thing that Alex would wear as a shirt, that, to be fair. I think he'd really enjoy it. I think <laughs> yeah, if you see one, let me know. I'll, I'll buy that happily. Yeah. Good stuff. Cool. Thank you, Adam. Um, incidentally, Adam is hosting our third session of the weekend, which is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, uh, which is basically the everyone gets very drunk session where um, it's 6% or over beers. Um Laura, I forgot to mention, is hosting session number two tomorrow, which is um, sours and mixed fermentation beers. Um, so, um, yeah, there's still tickets available for those two. So if anyone does fancy uh, coming along to either of those, they are six o'clock and eight o'clock respectively tomorrow. Right. Let's say hello to John and uh, let's see what beer you've got, John. Hi. So I've got uh, from St. Mars, what is it? Clamp? You can see that on camera. Cracking beer. I've had before and is always really, really good. Uh, why it's loud and proud. Um, the can may not be loud, but I really like their designs of their cans. And that, to, to, to me, what they don't have in colour on the cans, they really, like, they really make up in a really original striking image. So to me, they're always really interesting. And I think the flavour is sort of punchy and quite loud in a good way. So, yeah, that's my reason. So, good reason. Add something to the proud thing. I think we're Sorry? all very proud of having St. Mars of Desert as a Sheffield brewery. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm always, <laughs> they're, they're one of my favourite breweries at the moment, and I'm so proud that they're just like a couple of guys over in Ascliffe. Uh, I think that's amazing. So, yeah, they can cover the pride bit. I think anyone that we've got either on, on this session or anyone that's watching this that lives outside of Sheffield is probably thinking, St. Mars who? Because I'm not sure how far and wide they've, they've travelled yet. Um, but um, yeah, anyone that's not in Sheffield, keep an eye out for them because they are fantastic beers. Um, very smooth link alert here because, John, you have a St. Mars of the Desert beer. Earlier today, I bought two St. Mars of the uh, Desert beers from Tony at Craft & Berry. Good evening. Good evening. How are we doing? Yeah, all right. Um, so you also run a beer shop, so you have absolutely no no excuse for not coming up with the best beer in the world for uh, this session of the beer festival. So what have you got? 
Okay, so I, I thought a lot about this, um, and I think you came in actually, and I, and I said I was thinking, and one jumped out at me, um, and I, I thought, yeah, that one will do, and then I was still thinking. And then today, um, I don't know if you can see the tin, it actually jumped off the shelf at me. So I figured it kind of shows itself. So this is Matching Mullet from Lost Industries, uh, which is a red IPA, 6.1%. Um, yeah, very uh, very loud can, um, and obviously David Bowie, very proud of uh, proud of him being from England. He's an awesome awesome singer, awesome music. So yeah, it kind of fitted fitted the theme it, it very would, well. It'd be really wonderful if you took your hat off and you actually had a mullet. Uh, but, hey, you know what? It's <laughs> not a million miles off at this moment. <laughs> Tony, what's your thoughts on the feel of that can? We've all been talking about how it feels. Uh, very sticky when they come out the fridge, um, and they they have a habit of the, the 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 labels unpeel and stick themselves together. So when you take one out of the fridge, the rest follow. Yeah, it has a bit of a polystyrene effect. You know, it kind of goes through me. It's kind of sticky yeah. and squeaky. And, but very I had that in the the last episode of the Hotcast uh, this week. Yeah. Yeah, Good. very squeaky. So yeah, that's what I've got for. Cool. Good stuff. Thank you, Tony. Uh, let's go to Kieran. Good evening. Hello. I've actually got the same sticky can situation here whenever I lost industry beer. It's weird because it's like, it just, it's not coming off my hands. Like, <laughs> that's upside down. It's a bizarre <laughs> party trick, isn't it? I've seen people yeah, do weird. that with their, with their, new, oh, like the their new cans. We'll have to try and get the, uh, we'll have to try and get them on to, uh, to talk us through why that happens right. and whether it's deliberate or not. Uh, so yeah, I've got a Lost Industry beer that I bought from Tony, uh, which is uh, different. Uh, it's a carrot and beetroot uh, goza, which is, um, yeah, it's definitely loud and proud with that label in both label and taste of it. Uh, you know, carrot and beetroot's quite a, quite a combo, but it's not the worst beer I've ever drink, uh, drunk. So that's a that's a good sign. Well, there we go. I mean, you can't you can't praise oh. indeed there from Kieran. It's not the worst beer. Well, that I mean, I've ever had. I mean, James James know this. James was actually the person that actually got me into craft beer when we used to go to uh, away days. Uh, sour beers and gozers for me was I didn't touch them did at all. That was I remember drinking one once and thinking this just tastes like I've just tipped a bag of Tang Fastics in my mouth. And all my mouth's frothing, and it's horrible, and I don't like it. But now I can't get enough of them. I love sour beer. By the way, a mouthful of Tang Fastics is a lovely experience, Kieran. No, it's don't not. Knock it until still, you... no, it's still not. I like sour beer, but I still won't have a <laughs> mouthful of it. Tang Fastics. I've said this before. What's wrong with that? It's brilliant. No. Um, that that is a beer, by the way, that has got a bit of a story that goes with it. Um, we actually featured um, the organisers of the Out and About group, who are based in in Sheffield, um, about three or four weeks ago. So that's um, they actually kind of um, were part of a, a, a collaborative brew that that made that beer with um, Lost Industry um, to highlight kind of what their group does, uh, which is um, all about creating um, kind of a, a safe space within the craft beer scene for the LGBT community in Sheffield. Um, so it's a brilliant story that goes with it. Anyone that's not heard that, it's worth going back, just finding that episode of the podcast from a few weeks ago, because what the Out and About crew do is is brilliant and um, yeah, really good that, um, that their beer is still knocking around, which is Excellent. Uh, right then, let's go to Paul next. Evening, Paul. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, so, just picking up on a point earlier about some Mars of the Desert. I'm obviously a southerner based near Croydon, and I've had quite a lot of their beers, mainly because I buy a huge amount of beer off Sean. Of course, <laughs> so, yeah. So Sean, was... Sean can't be with us unfortunately um, tonight because he's had to do a week's work and he's like, no, I'm going to have to sleep for a couple of days now, bless him. Uh, but uh, he will be hosting the Sunday night session, which is Stout Sunday, so uh, he will be making an appearance at, at some point. What's uh, what's your beer then tonight, Paul? Uh, so basically, I've gone for a, a beer from um, Pipeworks Brewing, which are based in Chicago, and it's basically one of the best looking cans I've seen, uh, and. I've got three or four of their beers and they're all stunning labels. Um, and the beer is basically, it's a mosaic hot parallel, 6%. Tastes really great and it's clear. 
Um, very tasty, single hot beer. But yeah, it's just the can looks amazing. Unfortunately, it's not a label can, it's printed on the can. So that would have been one I would love to have been able to get out and stick on the beer fridge. So you're going to have to get like a Stanley knife out and proper cut the can to bits in order to unfold yeah. that and keep it. It's going to be a bit of a pain. Yeah. So what um, So what are your local breweries down where you are? I'm then, so, but yeah. so basically I'm Croydon based. So we've now got uh, Anne Spash and Hob Day are, who've moved from the Bermondsey Beer Mart down to Croydon. So they're now five minutes away and are done, doing some really good beers at the moment. Uh, we've got a couple of smaller ones, Signal and Cronk's Brewery, who don't get very much out of London, but... I'm only 20 minutes away from London, so I get, you know, to go up to the Bermondsey Beer Mile quite a lot. Um, but getting from beers from Sean, you know, I've had lots of Abbeydale beers as well, so Moonshine in cans, brilliant. Um, so no, so I've been virtually trying to keep the craft industry alive during this by buying virtually from everyone this time. My wife's gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's because uh, you're keeping the economy ticking over. You know, it's it can exactly. only be good. It can only be good. Cool. Thank That's you. That's also uh, one good thing about being uh, married to somebody equally as into beer as me that we can't get cross at each other when we both accidentally. I say accidentally, yeah. <laughs> but we both buy beer all of the time from as many places as we can. <laughs> have you have you ever had a situation, Laura? Where one of you said to the other, "Look, you've taken this too far now." No, I, not yet. I we might be we might be approaching. It. I'd love to know what that limit would be for one or the other of you to just think. No, it's just gone too far. It's gone too far. <laughs> this conversation has just reminded me that um, my local brewery, Far Brew, um, every Saturday they do five pint boxes of their beer you can come and get and i've gone every week since lockdown started and the deadline to order is the night before and i'd completely forgotten so thank you everyone i'm now going to email them and get my <laughs> tomorrow, which is lovely teamwork teamwork <laughs> love it uh right so i mean paul is a fair distance away from where we are in sheffield but we're going to go a little bit further afield now because we uh we do have an international guest who is uh with us uh who is peter joining us from denmark with uh a very very nice fetching uh, top that you've got that on there uh peter uh what is the beer that you've brought along tonight i think i know what this is and i'm quite excited about this well, it's, um, do you hear that? Good noise, yes. Yeah. Whoa, it's spilling over as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's my own making. It's the first beer I brewed um, just uh, a month, or, month and a half ago, I think. Um, so it's a bit, uh, well, I've, a, I've had a few of them already, but the, the thing that's tricky about making beer is uh, to get the carbonation right. So I definitely didn't do that with this one. Um, <laughs> And I also got too much yeast into the bottle, so you can see the uh, the bottom of the bottle is quite yeasty. Um, but thankfully, there's some decent flavours in there. So it's um, supposed to be a um, an oatmeal cookie stout. Um, it's from uh, Brooklyn Brew Shop. They do um, do some great um, brew at home kits where you can yeah, the instructions are quite good and uh, it's not too expensive either. And you can get all sorts of um, different beers. Uh, I've also bought a um, um, a double IPA kit from them as well um and uh yeah I mean I, I made it so I have to think it's it's a nice beer I, I guess <laughs> um and you're so you're in Denmark so what what are your um kind of local breweries that people in the UK might have, have come across um well the, the big brewery in in Aarhus which is the uh, town I'm in uh is is quite mainstreamy so um I have to think now um uh well i mean people do not do know some of the danish breweries i mean tool uh or i don't know how you guys pronounce it but t-o and then the funny o and l yeah um it's but, but most of the breweries are based in in copenhagen there's this brewery in in a, in a town about an hour's drive south of here that's called open uh, which is a funny a and then b e n which are quite taking the uh, the beer world in Denmark quite by storm. Um, so if you get get across any of those where you guys are, or some of the uh, the, the many beer merchants on on the show, uh, you should uh, should definitely pick up some some of theirs up. And there's another local brewery actually. Uh, the other beer I had with me, 
it's from a, from a, a small town called Abeltoft, which is about 40 minutes drive from here, um, which is a really, really good um, IPA. They make a very fruity IPA. Um, so we do have a few local breweries, um, but my main haunts uh, for getting beers is, uh, is um, oh shit, I forgot. I've, uh, there's, there's a guy in my neighborhood who does beer as well. He has a, he has a brewery called Brew42. Um, so you, you, so what you do is you 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 subscribe to the beer. So uh, each month he'll he'll shoot you an email and and ask you how many you want, and then he'll just put them uh, at his desk, and then you can just go pick it up and you you pay by phone uh, when you pick it up. Um, uh, and he makes all sorts of different different beers, um, so that's quite good as well. Um, so so oh, now that I think about it, there are quite a few <laughs> local breweries. I just had to jig jig the memory there. You uh, you certainly do all right for uh, for beer over there. So I have uh, I I was over and, and visited uh, Aarhus on a little tour of Scandinavia that I did last summer, um, and uh, can confirm there are some good beers to be uh, to be had. Cool, thank you, Peter. Um, I think that's our first home brew of uh, of the evening, which is good. Um, let's go to Sean. Good evening, Sean. Hi, everybody. Um, I don't know if anyone can see this one. So uh, Union Black by Box Social, a uh, little father-son brewery up in Newcastle, uh, in conjunction with the rap reggae metal band uh, Skin Grid from Wales. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good, that's all right. And so that met the lab. <laughs> and then obviously with the, um, the vegan, so it's a vegan beer. Um, it's all spice, uh, Jamaican, cinnamon, Stout, only 6%, so uh, sessionable, but it's got uh, bags of flavour in it. Very, very black. Oh, yeah. That is very black. I love that 6% is sessionable now. I was just yeah. thinking that exact same thing. We class 6% as sessionable now. I think that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? Like Jaipur, that's, that's, that's a, a low alcohol beer now. That, that's a morning drink. So it's not quite a breakfast stout, this one, but yeah, definitely. Um, um, so for me, that was loud and proud, and especially with, uh, as we mentioned before, Black Lives Matter and various things. And they're very proud with their uh, Jamaican heritage and roots as well. So that's my beer for tonight. Good stuff. Excellent choice, um, Sean. Thank you. Whereabouts are you based, by the way? Are you in Sheffield? Uh, Doncaster. So uh, yet again, it's uh, Sean that keeps me uh, libated, shall we say. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, right, let's go to Ollie. Um, Ollie, your background is good. I'm hoping your beer choice is going to be as good to match. Unfortunately not. Um, I intended to buy a Axon Brewery Clearwater Pale Ale when I went back to my office um, in North Lincolnshire this week, but I completely forgot on the way back from seeing a client. And so instead, I'm having to drink um, something from a drinks globe, which is a Porto Branco instead. So no beer for me, but a white port. Okay, I mean that's that's certainly nice. strong. So it, it kind of class has been quite quite loud. Um, it's probably not the most beery of beeries that uh, beer beery of beers even that we're going to have on the uh, on the show this evening. But um, the the effort was there. So is that your kind of go to brewery normally? Well, it's the brewery is about half a mile from where mum and dad live, um, and it started. Um, it started off well it's still brewed there although they've another brewery in grimsby now where they do more of it um and you can see inside the fermentation room and they sell it at the local like caravan park holiday bar um, that the people can go to and just have a drink of on regularly on tap so when we were allowed to see our friends i uh, would go we would go there on a friday night and have one of those and then um just sit on the lake and have a chat Good stuff. And how are you feeling about um, football returning tomorrow? Can't say I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I think that's something that may well be echoed among uh, other people on uh, on the call this evening. Uh, right, one person that we've not spoke to yet is Chris. Evening, Chris. Hope you're well. Um, what do you uh, have in your glass this evening? Good evening. So I've gone for a Tandy Rebel this evening, so the, a bit another Welsh connection. Uh, I've gone for one of the Stay Puffed range, so... I guess I first tried the the, the base stay puffed uh, maybe four years ago. It's kind of a you know right up my street, been a marshmallow porter and um, and with the the Ghostbusters connection with the the artwork there as well. So a nice little nostalgia trip. But this is actually the uh, Imperial Waffle and Candied Bacon Marshmallow Porter, the Imperial one. 
So it's a, a 9% um, with the, uh, the candied bacon and, um, and waffle in there. So uh, I think that probably counts as loud. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's what I'm on this evening. That sounds, I've not come across that before. That sounds lovely. Is it, is it as good as it sounds? It is, yeah. I mean, you've got you've got kind of the that backbone of the the stay puff that's quite sweet and marshmallowy, but there's definitely kind of a savoury hint coming through, um, and a bit of a smoke on the nose. So it is, it's uh, it's a good one. Cool, good stuff. I think we've got a good number of, uh, of of decent stouts between us this evening. I think that's impressive. Um, mine obviously was the, uh, it's called This Little Piggy Went to Market. I'm not sure what the actual kind of link between the beer and the name is. Um, this is 11%, so it's kind of the top end of, I think, what anyone's probably drinking this evening. And in typical kind of imperial stout fashion, the first couple of mouthfuls were very 11%. Now, it's fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. It's just like drinking water. I wouldn't even know that it got any alcohol in it. It's lovely. It's going down very well. And I feel quite a bit warmer than I did when I uh, first started drinking this, um, this beer. So we, um, Peter obviously is, is the only person that's brewed his own beer for tonight, but it, it got me quite interested. Do we have anyone else that's had a go at home brewing? And um, if so, how did it go? Do we have, uh, do we have any? Yep. Yeah, I have. I did um, a St. Peter's, which is like a Suffolk brewery, is it, or Norfolk brewery? Um, it was their like Red Ruby beer or something. It's one of the kit ones, but it was like, rather than spending eight, nine, ten pound in Wilco's, I think I spent 20 pound on that. And it was actually all right. I didn't bottle it. I put it in like one of the, the like barrels. So you got like something to have like 40 pints out of it. And you had to just smash through it as quick as possible. But like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not like a red red or ruby ale kind of sort of fan but this is going back probably 10 years or something and now in fact during lockdown i just realized i found all the the brewing equipment in the back of the garage because it's a big clear out but, um yeah it was, I was quite it worked fine it's quite it's quite good it's, it's, it's kind of doing a kit's a bit like making a big cup of tea you know you just put something in and just add a load of hot water to it and then just let, let it mash and then uh, <laughs> then it's ready eventually but um yeah, I'd be interested to do some. I, I, one of my friends has done a bit of proper like whole grain brewing in his uh, in his um, in his basement once. It just smelt like he was growing weed because like the like the hops coming out of it were just. It was <laughs> so I've had a bit of a go at that, but yeah, I just I started the equipment, all the time and patience to really do a proper good job of it. I don't think. I spent the eight, nine, ten quid in Wilco's option, and uh, threw a party when it was brewed so everyone could drink it. And the toilet was very busy that night. <laughs> I thought uh, it was all right. I, I, I take it from that that you've not ventured into the uh, brew world since then, Will? No, I, I do know a guy down here who brews some insane beers out in his shed, but he's got like, I think there's probably two tiers of it, right? There is the literally brewing a massive cup of tea version. He's got some level of equipment, which I think he spent a few hundred quid on but i mean he's got a proper tap and that comes out of his shed and some of the beers he's given me there have been absolutely delicious adam if you're if you're wanting to kind of branch back into brewing i believe that kieran is looking for someone to uh, to brew with him potentially on a a, a podcast um to yep. map out the process of brewing uh, a beer at home let's do it i know um i think um, a friend of mine from doncaster he, um, he's on my, I think he's coming on mine tomorrow, hopefully, and he's, he's documenting his kind of um, starting to home brewing, because he's gone from somebody who not really drink at all craft beer into, he'll do occasional like long form video of him, like, what, you know, his processes and stuff, but um, he, he might have something, he might be able to go and use his kit. I, th I think it'd be cool to do like, um, like both follow the same recipe, or try and make <laughs> the same type of beer, and then have a blind taste test. So uh, get a few people obviously tasting and then not knowing who's, you know, who's, who's made what and just giving a rating. I think that'd be quite cool. That's kind of what's been happening, hasn't it, with this All Together, is it All Together Now beer that a load of breweries have done, which is the same, is it the same? I'm hoping there's someone that knows more about this than I do. Probably one of our um, two beer shop runners will probably know a bit more than I do. Um, but I think it's the same kind of base recipe and then each brewery has just put their own twist on it, something like that. It's another half recipe, 
that I think everyone was encouraged to use but wasn't forced into doing it exactly the same. Um, obviously, as well, taking into account that certain ingredients and certain hops have been a bit more challenging to get hold of. Um, but yeah, it was uh, the same recipe that other half shared um, that quite a lot of breweries have been involved with. I've had the um, Heist and Full Circle collab version and the Mondo version. And they were both um, both really, really excellent. I think the Mondo one was a bit more kind of squishy and soft and juicy. And the uh, Full Circle Heist one was a bit more tropical um and fruit forward but they were both you know you could tell that they were both very similar beers and um both really good so i'd be keen to mm. to try some others and obviously all with good uh, message and meaning behind them as well uh, neither of them quite fitted into the pillowy <laughs> category then <laughs> actually i had the day of one i had the day of one that was very pillowy it was still so. i'm still baffled by the phrase Pillow, yeah. I kind of like it, but I still don't really know what it what it means. Yeah, I had the uh, full circle brew one uh, last weekend. It's really good. Mm. Yeah, I yeah, like I the idea of that. I think that's good. That's but, uh, yeah, me and my partner yeah. three innocent. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Oh, this, that little bottle's cute. This was almost going to be my choice for tonight. This is the one from Dig in uh, Birmingham. Um, so I've had quite a few of theirs lately, and I think I've had the uh, Verdant. Cloudwater one has just been released as well. I've had quite a few of them and they've all been really good. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. I like the idea of that. So I think that could be a base point for Adam and Kieran. You could do a um, like a, a brew off. Oh, Laura's got one as well. Is that one of... Or is that, are you just onto another beer there, Laura? Yeah, not? Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Um, Simon, I was going to ask you about um, when you came on the Hopcast, which was, as we said earlier, it was quite early on in the whole kind of lockdown um, craziness. You were a bit worried about actually being able to get hold of beer because a lot of your local places are kind of closed and you were uncertain whether or not you'd end up just having to go down the supermarket route. How, how did things sort of play out there in terms of um, breweries around you and, and whatnot? It was a bit of a mixed bag, really. Some places kind of stopped for a bit and then they restarted again and um so yeah it, it hasn't been a problem but we sort of tended to kind of uh, although trying to support local we ended up kind of like going to places like cloudwater and stuff like that because uh as uh, as vicky works for the nhs uh we just happened to use the nhs discount that some of these places are very nicely uh sorted out so cloudwater and uh lost and grounded places like that um doing a bit of that but um, other places like the one I'm drinking now from Twisted Barrel, uh, they carried on brewing. And uh, so, yeah, it, it wasn't the nightmare I thought it would be. Um, <laughs> I didn't have to resort to supermarket beers much at all. So it was all right. And um, Peter, so obviously where you are in Denmark, am I right thinking that pubs have now reopened there? Yeah, yeah, that's a long time ago. I mean, we, I do live in the civilized free world after all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't miss the opportunity for a dig. I thought you were just uh, going to be nice and compassionate about it, but how wrong I was. Um, so what, what did you not feel? I mean, I think we're, we're at that point where it's, what, a couple of weeks away now from the rumored date that pubs will uh, reopen here. Um, and... I feel quite nervous about it. I'm, I'm sort of at the moment not, not feeling like I, I would want to entertain the idea of going in a pub for ages. Um, have, have you been to the pub since they've reopened? How did it feel? Does it, is there like a kind of a cautiousness and nervousness around people? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that, that's actually quite accurate. Um, thing is, though, all the pubs um, have been really good at, at like putting... Um, as you've seen in supermarkets, putting putting stickers on the floor and um, having plenty of um, of, uh, of disinfectant around and, and all that. So, so it's not it's not like the place is not trying to accommodate you, but it is just just having lived like a um, a life of being on your own for, for a couple of months. It is just weird getting into places where there are more people than than you normally see. Um, and it's it's the same whether you're going to a pub or you're going to to the street or into the park or uh, but it's different when you go inside it's definitely um so so yeah it, it, some of the pubs here have done uh, i think this is the same in, in sheffield that they've done they've sold out uh, from from the from from the from the door like doing like stable door sales um so that's kept them going and, and there's a there's a beer shop here that did um 
which encouraged you to uh, to top up when you bought beers, uh, and they uh, donated the proceeds to to the bars, uh, the, the good beer bars, you know, to to keep them going uh, through all this. So so uh, there's there's also a, diff a sort of a solidaric uh, feel towards um, towards the good beer bars that are around in almost uh, set that that uh, people who like good beers uh, need to go there. So so that's also part of it. Good stuff. We heard um, Laura earlier talking about the beer stop and kind of queues halfway down the uh, road. Um, of course, uh, beer stop has been um, open right throughout lockdown and has carried on. Um, Tony, you've recently reopened um, Crafton and, and Berry after kind of just doing deliveries and stuff. So kind of reopening for people to actually come in the shop. How's that been going in the last? Is it was it just this week or last week? Uh, yeah, just over two weeks. Just over two um yeah not bad i mean obviously ecclesaw road when the weather was great when we weren't open ecclesaw road was mad busy and we were regretting not being open and then obviously the weather's took a turn and it's been a little quiet this week not bad today but wednesday thursday when it was really bad was uh, yeah a bit quiet but yeah it's good but okay yeah it's looking better yeah. from next week onwards, weather-wise. So, um, yeah. you know, fingers crossed all round that that will be good for for all of us. We can get back into our respective gardens and actually enjoy a beer in the sunshine again. Uh, right, okay. Uh, we've got a couple of things left to do, so we need to do beer selfie. We'll do that right at the end. Uh, but uh, we've all got to rate our beers uh, out of ten. Now, you can give a reason if you if you want. So, um, let's go to Laura um, first. Laura Bainbridge Hattersley. Um, I think what was it? 12% yours, Laura. It was a pretty... Yeah, it was, it was a, a reasonable, easy drinking 12%. Um, so you've got, I think you've got to score this from your own level of knowledge when it comes to that kind of yeah. beer, because you are, I would say, uh, if, I, if, if someone asked me to name an expert in Mad Imperial Stouts, it would be you. So uh, what do you give that one out of 10? I'm gonna go seven and a half. Okay, that's not that's not bad. It, it's not bad. It it was good. I've got a nice warm face. <laughs> so that's a good thing. But I like I just it was nice, but I wanted a little bit more from it. Oh, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. <laughs> maybe eight. No, it was nice. It was nice, but I wanted it to be like. More like a cakey punch in the mouth. Yep, I'm with you on that. Let's let's say seven point seven five then. Let's go down the middle and yeah, uh, that's and fine. I'm happy right. with that. Good stuff, uh, Alex. What are you scoring yours? Um, I'm going to say a six because it was it was palatable enough, but it wasn't that memorable. It was just sort of pleasant. You know, you could probably have a few and enjoy them, but uh, the Neapolitan is is a lot nicer. So yeah, probably a six. Fair score, Simon. Um, the uh, Defiant Hearts um, Twisted Barrel, um, I reckon I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. I think it's a really nice beer for 5%. It's got quite a sort of thick kind of mouthfeel. It feels like it's probably about 3% stronger than it is. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. So yeah, 8 out of 10. Uh, good stuff. Let's go to Hopcast Laura next. Uh, I'm also I'm going to give my mild an eight out of ten as well. Um, it was really great, really easy drink it in. Um, it lost one point for being. I think it's just a tiny bit too sweet. My mouth feels a little bit sticky, um, and it lost one other point because I don't know if anybody saw when I opened it, who's watching the feed or the video, but it went everywhere, <laughs> and um, I now got mild all over um my white cushion that my mum knitted me <laughs> so, I've <did> it. <laughs> so i've deducted a point for it spoiling my hand knitted cushion uh this is another reason why you shouldn't drink mild you know it's it's, it's a sign <laughs> it's a sign don't just uh, mild <laughs> but i did really enjoy it all right good stuff good stuff um will what are you giving hop house 13 
You can't you can't give it thirteen, by the way. That's not allowed. I don't know if you know, but there's been a bit of goings on in the Zoom chat while this has been going on, and a few right. other people are professing their I wouldn't say love, but their appreciation for a, an occasional hot house thirteen. I, I would have described it as tolerance rather than appreciation, but you know, it's just a matter of opinion. <laughs> No, I, I, I didn't defend it earlier because I was too scared to, but I actually do quite like it every now and then. That is all right. It is a nice beer. No, James, <laughs> 10. 10. There's a tin. Hot pals, isn't it? Lovely. I'm not, I'm not going to dignify it with a response. Let's go to Gary. Um, is it is your first time you've had this particular beer from Cloudwater? Um, no, it isn't. I chose it because I like it. Um, I've had it. A lot of beers and cloud water because, like um, I think Simon was saying, they do give us a nice 25% key worker discount. I work for a local authority, so I get away with it. It's, uh, it's nice, it's, it's got a lot of flavor. Uh, it's, it's got the, the magic letters DDH, as our friend Jim would say, it's very flowery. Or hoppy and it's um yeah it's good i'll give it eight out of ten it's got a little bit of an aftertaste which is a bit which maybe knocks a couple of marks off fair enough good reasons um adam put me on the spot aren't you because i've had a abidale beer and jim's sat there I yeah. see him. <laughs> and just no see him peering his head yet on the sofa what would jim give it that is i'll give it a steady i'm gonna give it a 7.75 um, it's not my favourite unbelievable series, but I think I would probably give it another point if it was a really nice warm day and I was sat outside. Um, I think these kind of beers sometimes your kind of environment influences you a little bit. Um, but really solid, really sessionable. Like I say, it's three point eight percent, not too, not overly um, sour. And then nice to the few, the fruit puree is that tropical flavour that kind of rounds it out a bit. But I think maybe it's the puree bit that. I would probably pick something a little bit kind of not puree if, if I had a choice. So maybe like some of the other other series, other, other series probably I prefer for me. But yeah, really good. I'd happily drink a few more of those easy. Um, but I did actually drink the um, afterwards and did crazy things to that flavour. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have a beer and then it, the knock-on effect to the next beer, it just kind of just. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what's going on from my mouth. <laughs> I have just made a note of the word puree. Uh, I'm going to um, use that. I think that's 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 a good one. Uh, right then, uh, let's go to Paul. How was uh, how was your beer, Paul? What are you going to score it out of ten? Yeah. Uh, so the beer I'm giving an eight and a half. The design of the can I'm giving a ten. <laughs> but I prefer uh, the can I've got for tomorrow with Adam's ones even better. So, but eight uh, eight and a half for the beer. It's a good hook, nice. that. It's a good tease, that, to uh, to carry everyone yeah. forward to tomorrow. I like it. Good work. Thank you, Paul. Uh, right, Kieran, um, you didn't s seem to be speaking glowingly of your beer earlier on. So has it, has it grown on you? Um, a little bit. I'd probably get like a 6 out of 10. I think it, the two quite different flavours for a beer to kind of bring a lot of flavour to the party. Uh, yeah, probably like 6 out of 10, probably. All right, fair score, fair score. Um, Tony? Uh, I would probably give it a seven and a half out of ten. Um, it's nice, it's maybe a touch too sweet. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely have another one, definitely. So yeah, seven and a half. Uh, that's good. I think all in all, they're decent scores that are coming here. Um, John, obviously, Clamp, I'm guessing, is a beer you've had a few times before. It is a, a consistently good beer. What are you going to give it out of ten? I'll give it a solid 8 out of 10. It's, uh, it's very, very drinkable. And I'm now sort of two thirds of the way through, but it's still carrying all the flavour and all the punch. Uh, sometimes these beers lose their flavour a bit halfway through, but this one, uh, this one keeps it. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's a good point that I think that clamp is the kind of thing that you can just, you can drink a few of them and you don't really bore of it. I think it's a, just a really nice beer to uh, to drink. Uh, right, let's go to Chris. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say edges and eight. It's got kind of the the big sweetness of all the imperial stale puffs, uh, stale puffs, and and uh, and all the various things they do to it. But the um, the bacon does add something slightly different 
it just adds that that little savoury edge, that little bit of smokiness, and it, it does make it just just a little bit a little bit better than its its brethren. I think. Does it actually have bacon in it? I asked that because I think is it is it Abbeydale that did um, a, a bacon beer that didn't actually contain bacon? It was just various flavourings that kind of give it that gave it that bacon uh, profile. We did do a beer with bacon in it. We also did a pork scratching beer that did not have pork scratchings in it. It had the pork scratching flavouring in it. That's the one I'm thinking of. Ooh. I find it quite interesting that um, quite a few, I think, bacon things don't actually contain bacon. Yeah. You know, our I... bacon beer did. <laughs> I had that. It was extreme. It, it really was. If you don't like the kind of bacon thing, then... Um... Yeah, it, it was a real divisive, should we say, uh, beer. I can't remember what that was called now. Um, the bacon one was um, Don't Go Bacon My Heart. <laughs> <laughs> it was an was absolute nightmare to make. Yeah. Just right. and, uh, <laughs> then the, the pork scratching one was You Scratch My Back. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that well. Um, I guess if it's, not, if it's not listed as an ingredient, then it probably doesn't have... Um, bacon in it i don't think you could get away with putting actual bacon in a beer and not putting that in the label there's a slight issue when it comes to uh, vegetarian and vegan friendliness isn't there there um right ollie was the only person whose beer was not actually a beer so i don't know how that fits within our scoring profile but um what are you going to give it out of 10 well this is my kind of go to drop so i'm going to say 8 out of 10 for this even though it's not a beer although clear water pale ale Definitely an eight out of ten beer. Okay, cool, good stuff. Um, Sean, uh, well, I'm going to give that a seven out of ten. Um, a little bit thin for me. I'm a bit more imperial, a bit more body. I prefer. It reminds me a bit of Day of the Death by Northern Monk, their Mexican spiced one, which uh, is beefy. Um, but yes, a nice drop. Good strength. Going down quite well. Good stuff. Cool. Um, I forgot to do mine, by the way, um, which I, I'm going to give eight out of ten. Um, it's very, very nice. It carries all the flavors quite, um, quite well. In hindsight, it's just probably just not as punchy as I thought it would be for 11%, which I know seems like a ridiculous thing to, to say. But um, yeah, so I think a, a safe 8 out of 10. Um, I've left Peter till last just because I think it's going to be incredibly cringeworthy to ask Peter to rate his own beer <laughs> out, of, uh, out of 10. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest, being honest, it's the uh, it's trial and error, isn't it? So yeah, in a couple of years, I'll make a probably make a decent beer, but it's it's some ways away still. Hey, look, it's your first attempt at brewing a beer, so I think if it, I think mine would be minus four out of ten if I tried it. So uh, I think a, any kind of plus number is good. So by my calculations, there, I think Paul is the happiest with his beer at eight point five um out of 10 so um good stuff good stuff one thing left for us to do we all need to hold our um glasses and cans and whatnot up to the camera so that we can do a nice beer selfie uh, which we'll do as a as a screenshot from the uh from the video uh so cans out big smiles i mean mine's a different beer in the glass to the can but if you don't say anything, fine. Will. no one will know <laughs> got no beer left <laughs> good stuff Right, that will do us. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, guys, um, all of you for coming along and taking part in uh, our first session of Chef Hoff, Chef Hoff Fest. So I'm having trouble saying that's the 11% stout that I've not 11%. been able to feel just kicking in. Um, so our second session is tomorrow. It's on Saturday at six o'clock, uh, which is with Laura. Uh, and Laura will be showcasing uh, sours and mixed fermentation beers. There are still one or two tickets available for that if you go to sheffieldhopcast.eventbrite.com if you would like to sign up to take part in that tomorrow. And of course, it will be live on our Facebook page and the podcast version of it will be available as well um, afterwards. Um, but um, yes, guys, thank you very much for coming along. If you come into any more sessions, we will see you later in the uh, weekend. And uh, if not, enjoy the rest of your Friday night and have a fantastic weekend. Thank you all. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.